Good morning my YouTube friends. I haven't done a video in a while. This will be a little uh, sh unboxing video and uh, in a slight update I'll talk about other things that are going on. So this is an item that I bought from a guy that I buy a lot from. He's an electronic seller, not on eBay, surprisingly. Oh, I forgot how much he likes peanuts. And uh, I got this is really cheap, which when you see it, you might think, uh, good thing you didn't pay too much for that. <laughs> it's it's rough, at least by the pictures. It's also heavy. And I got to get it out of here without making a total mess of these peanuts, which is always a challenge. His name's John Kendall, a great guy to deal with. Um, I've talked about him before because I've bought stuff from him many times before and done videos on stuff I bought from him. His website is Vintage Electronics. There's a hyphen in it. I'll put it on the screen. He, he slowed down. He doesn't have as much on his thing for sale anymore. He moved, which necessitated him having to sell off and get rid of a lot of the stuff he had for sale, I think. And He's gotten going again, but he's not as prolific as he was in posting new things for sale. But his basic thing to sell is vintage electronics. He buys out estates, I believe, most of the time. I like to do a, a live stream, but not really truly live because I don't post it live, but I do minimal editing and then throw it up on eBay. Got that from my good friend Jim Lindenis, who I have talked about many times. I won't go into all that. So this item, when you see it, looks rough. It's an early piece from this company's history, which is why I wanted it. And I'll talk more about that when we see what it is. I don't want to completely ruin the surprise. Of course, it's never a surprise because, you know, I always think about this. Well, if I post it on eBay, yeah, eBay, uh, just talking about that. Well, if I post it on YouTube, I'm going to put down in the title what it is. So you're going to know before you watch the video. <laughs> anyway. So it's kind of a mute point. As you can see, he packs well. He knows how to pack. He sells mainly electronics, so he knows how to pack them. So you don't run into the problem with many eBay sellers where you get beautiful wooden cased radios thrown in a cardboard box with minimal packing and the side of it is smashed in because it got dropped or whatever. We're better. This is, as you can probably see, a meter. It is a Hewlett Packard voltmeter, VTVM. It only does volts, nothing else. No ohms, no resistors, checks, you know. A lot of these have become multi-use things. And uh, it's strictly AC voltage. It's interesting, when I first got it, I, I was looking it up online and there's no indication on here that it's for AC. And I was wondering, well, I wonder if it does both. And there's nothing that says it does either one. It doesn't even say it's an AC meter. But when I looked up the uh, owner's manual, it is indeed an AC meter. Which is very good. And they actually uh, advertised it as such for being good for frequencies. You know, so these are, as you probably know, an AC meter reads a modulated signal and it's quite good for alignments of radios. So that's what they're good for. And this is an early meter. It's a 400B. Now there was a 400A and from what I read it on, on the internet, the 400A was originally designed by um, Bob, I always mix up their names, Bob Hewitt, I think. I think his first name was Bob. Packard and Hewitt, the two guys that made, started the company. And their early stuff is very collectible. Um, this is not 
an A, I wish it was an A, but it's a B. It has an improved circuit design. And I think this dates from about 1948, as far as I can tell from what I've looked up online. Uh, you can see it's very grungy. It's got rust, surface rust on it. My intention with this meter is to totally take it down, completely clean this cabinet. If I can't get it clean, and now that I see this, this looks more like dirt than rust, although some of it is rust. Uh, the nice thing about the way they did their meters is, is all the uh, nomenclature is engraved into it. Um, so if you strip it, you can still get the white paint to refill the, uh, all the all the engraved uh, lettering. Missing its leather top strap. It is, um, I saw this picture online, yeah, the, the, uh, the serial number 6025. I actually located a manual online for it, an actual HP manual that starts at like something like, and I don't remember the exact number, 5700 serial number and up. So it'll cover this one when I get that. I just ordered that separately. So let's open it up. I wanted to open it up on camera. That was one of my intentions. This thing is filled with tubes. These are very sophisticated meters. It's not your average voltmeter. HP was known for quality. They built some really good stuff when they did build it, especially their early stuff. Uh, there are collectors that collect their stuff. There's a guy named Kuhn, K-U-H-N. I cannot... Kenneth Kuhn. Yeah, I think that's his name. I'll put that on the on the screen, too. He has a website dedicated to the history of HP, and he collects a lot of their stuff. He has a lot of their early meters, which are worth some money. What they were actually known for was the audio uh, oscilloscopes. They sold the ones to Disney, to Walt Disney himself. And it kind of launched their company for the movie Fantasia. And I think they sold Disney like five audio oscilloscopes and they were used to produce all the spacey sounds in the soundtrack of that movie. They were very early HP audio oscilloscopes and they were... Um, they were made in their garage in Palo Alto, California. If you, you do a search on that, you will find, excuse me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> you will find that that garage has been preserved by the HP company and is now like a landmark national monument. Um, and I'm going to mix up which guy it was. One of them got married, and the other one lived in the garage. <laughs> Hewlett and Packard. And I forget which one it was. And uh, he slept on a cot in the garage, and they, they worked in the garage, and they built their very first electronic devices, which included oscillos these audio oscilloscopes. They got sold to Disney. This whole story's online. And the first ones they made, they made right in that garage shop and then the cases when they painted them they baked them in their oven in the house <laughs> I'm sure his wife loved that they baked them in the oven to cure the paint on the oscilloscopes that they sold and uh, and literally they are credited with starting the Silicon Valley like that was the first tech company in Palo, uh, Palo Alto I believe it was um, that had a true startup. And I know a lot of people nowadays think about Apple and how they started in a garage out in the Silicon Valley. Well, the Silicon Valley was already there when Steve Jobs and um, Wozniak started the Apple in the garage. And it was started in the garage of Hewlett and Packard back in the early, late 30s, I think. Late third, a third, yeah, it was. I'm pretty sure it was the 30s. Late 30s, early 40s. This one, this go, this meter is 48, I believe. But they were selling equipment in the late 30s, early 40s. Of course, became one of the biggest tech companies in the country. Sadly, not what they once were, since they both passed on. 
this front plate is not going to come off easily without me taking off. I was hoping I could just pull the back of this and look inside. I hate to, uh, boy, it looks like this top cover should pop off if I had it unscrewed. Yeah, let me see. I think it slides. Yeah, there we go. My dog is breaking into my room. She can open the door to my room, and it is a regular doorknob. She scrapes at it until it turns the knob, and she just came in here. I try to keep her out. So that's what that noise was in the background. She'll be in here in a minute to say hello. It's pretty clean inside. It's got all the tubes. Okay, we're back. My son saved me. He, he, he's out doing something in his room and he knew she came in here and took her out. They took her into his room, so you won't see Nina on camera. I think I've had her on camera before. So the ins the, although the outside has a lot of surface rust, I'm quite happy the inside this is very clean. These things are loaded. Um, I think each one of these are like a four section electrolytic and there's four of them. So those are all going to have to be replaced. It's uh, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tubes. Can you imagine a VTVM with seven tubes? This is our uh, H, uh, our five Y three GT power amplifier power tube for the rectif rectifier tube. Six V six. A VR one fifty. I am not familiar with that. That might be like a ballast tube or something. A 6SQ7. These things are so well quality. You know, everything was engraved on these. It's got it's got every tube type engraved right into the chassis. The chassis is nice and clean. I don't know how well you can see that. There's a big electrolytic down in there but it's really clean inside so even though it looks crusty outside this will be a great restoration project uh, so you can see the back look how well laid out they had made these meters all the resistors in these nice little slots there's a couple screws missing in there I don't know if you can see that right let me get a pointer mm -hmm. I gotta make sure I'm on camera. I'm looking at the the computer screens like over to my right off the back of my shoulder <laughs> and I gotta see where this thing is aiming. So in here, yeah I'm not in camera. I'm moving backwards. Don't I move it one way and it moves the other way on the camera. In here at the tip of this pencil there's a couple missing screws. I don't think you can see them. So somebody's been in here. I don't know why those screws are out. It's from a couple grounding uh, things. I wonder if how easily I can get the bottom off. Yeah, I think four screws. If you'll entertain me for a minute. This will not be an immediate thing that I'm going to restore. I am still building my K2 radio. I am almost to the point of making another video on it. I did share with you in the last video, I determined it's there's so much installation of components that's very tedious and time consuming that I'm not videotaping the whole thing. I originally thought I would but it's just too much to video. Um, what I just did was install a ton of resistors and capacitors and crystals and it's just tedious part component installation. I'm almost to the point where I'm going to start winding the toroids, which I talked about before. And when I do, I'm going to make a video on those. And when I get to the point in the manual and in the build when I'm doing some more testing electronically, I'm going to make videos of that. Yeah. Look at that nice uh plate under there i don't know what that material is it's like a it's like a plastic it would be an early plastic 
So this has, uh, gosh, it is really clean. So I was worried because the outside of this looked really crusty in the pictures, rusted from sitting in a shed or something, I would imagine. But the underside of this is very clean. Let me try to get down better. Let me get my LED light. going to cause glare but it's going to be better for viewing and look at how clean the inside of that is and I mean this is just massive for a me for just a voltmeter does nothing but AC volts it's huge and it's heavy spread capacitors these I believe are replacements because this looks like it might have been cut off and somebody soldered it to the the lead I think this is old enough it would have likely have had the uh, cardboard paper caps in it. These are more like 1960s vintage I believe. This is a big old cardboard cap I think. One of those potted ones maybe. That could, I think that is. These, yeah even the, yeah those, I don't know. I won't know until I take them out and put new ones in it. They might be replacements, but it doesn't matter. It's going to get new capacitors. I'm really happy the inside of this has no corrosion, though. I was worried I'd have to, like, strip the whole cabinet and strip the chassis to clean all the rust off. But when I saw the outside, it worried me. But the inside looks good. This is an interesting little component. This looks like a custom wire-wound resistor. It's got some pencil mark on it. And, uh... Let me tilt that a little more. I can't read what that says. It looks like T-I-Z. And it looks like a little wire wound resistor of some sort. And, and it probably is custom to the meter where they would wind them and make sure it matched and was calibrated when they put it in. It's something I wouldn't replace unless I uh, discovered it didn't work at all which I don't think is going to be the case. This thing is clean. I think we're going to be uh, I'm going to be happy with this. Switches turn freely. That's the voltage switch. Yep. So you can see the front. Here's a better close-up. It's rusty, you know, and I knew that. There's surface rust on here. So I think I'm going to want to paint it and try to match the gray paint and then refill all the all the wording with white paint and make it look new on the outside hopefully I will try to clean this first and see what it looks like but I doubt that I'm gonna get it really as clean as I'm gonna want it of course the meter I can take apart and clean that's just dirt huge huge transformer but that is quite the meter well, I thought I'd be uh, lo uploading the video by now, but I made that the first part of this video in the morning after I picked up my mail. And I got home from work this evening and decided to come in here and clean up. And I started screwing this thing back together, put the case back together. And I said, well, you know what? I think I'm just going to take a little uh, simple green to it just to clean it up a little bit before I set it on a shelf to wait to be restored. And I thought the rust looked a little suspicious on there, and you can probably already guess if you look at the top edge of that, this thing is not rusty. It's dirty. It's just dirt. And you know, the inside of this was so clean, there wasn't any rust inside at all, not a drop of it. And it looked to be in great shape inside, I thought. I thought it's strange, you know, because usually if something's sitting out in a damp environment and it corrodes on the outside from that, it corrodes on the inside. But this is not at all rust. Now there might be a little surface rust on this button because that's exposed chrome steel. But the enamel, and, and, and again, HP made quality stuff. I don't I know this one wasn't baked in uh, 
Mr. Packard's stove <laughs> oven in his on his house in Palo Alto, but because it's too new, it doesn't date back that far. But they did use a nice finish on these and probably baked on. I don't know. And look at how clean that is. Never fails. I start to make a video. Somebody comes in here. I paused the video. My son came in to ask me something. The uh, amazing to me, it looked like rust in the pictures. I didn't look super close at it here, but it has the color of rust. But it had a strange pattern to it, and I, I thought sort of in the back of my mind, oh, maybe it's not rust, because it looked like something had spilled on it and ran on it, or, you know, who knows. There are a few spots where the enamel is gone. You can see metal underneath. There might be little dots of rust. But... 99% of it is not rust. Let's see how well this... Uh, now the words, the HP words, are not coming crystal white. I don't know if they originally were. Perhaps they were off-white or perhaps they're just grimy from years and years of wear. I personally, and, and this is a personal preference, a lot of people approach these things differently. A lot of people, and, and I don't think there's anything wrong with either approach. It's, it just depends on your feeling about it. A lot of folks that do uh, restorations and work on this older equipment want to see it look like it did originally. And, and, and granted, a lot of it's not worth a lot, which we all know. You know, there's other areas of collecting where things are worth a lot of money. And electronics is generally not one of them. Um, so that's why, you know, you take an old radio that's a basket case and restore it and refinish it. You might sell it for a fair amount of money. More than, you'll ever, more than it would ever be worth otherwise. And they look beautiful. Uh, I am one who likes to keep things original whenever possible. Even with wear and tear on it. So I was only going to strip this and repaint it if that was truly rust, and as I thought it was. But now, there's no way. But uh, even the screws are shiny now, amazingly. I don't know what that yellow thing is. It's some kind of little label or something stuck on there. Oh, and by the way, I closed it up, but um, I thought there were two screws missing inside. What happened? There's a fuse holder in there, and it had popped rivets holding it in place and those pop rivets had some type of uh, corrosion or something on it that caused them to break off and, and, and I found the glass fuse with the fuse holder rattling around in the bowels of this thing um, so actually there was nothing missed there was nothing uh, messed with inside I'm not sure it was ever worked on I'm still not 100% sure those spread capacitors in it aren't new from the 60s they I, I just don't know uh, I, I pulled a couple tubes, looked at them. They, a couple of them had, I think, what were date codes from 52. That doesn't mean this unit's from 52. This unit dates from 48 of manufacture, as far as I know. I couldn't find anything inside that definitively would date it, but I will be doing, trying to do that in the future. But look how clean that is now. <laughs> Amazing. I don't, now, I don't know about... Yeah, let, me, let me do a test. This paint is different. It's the uh, crinkle finish. But even those little spatters, I think something was spilled over this thing. The front has that nice baked down enamel coating and it cleaned up easy. This this not as easy because whatever spilled on it, you know, this has a rough paint finish to it. And it's not going to clean up as good. But I'm still not going to paint it. I'm going to keep this original. Because it's in good enough shape, there's no reason to paint it. That's part of its history, you know. Who knows where it came from? I'd wish I knew. This, I also 
didn't focus on in the last video. I'll clean it. It's a brass tag. It didn't give me a clue to where it came from. I was hoping it would. It's got a stamped in number. You won't be able to read it, I don't think, but it says BAC-RL. Yeah, you'll never be able to read it. Um, 1631. Google search leads to nothing. No idea. I, I assume it's a property tag to whatever company this is sold to, more than likely. It's my guess. I don't think it's military. doesn't ring a bell. I don't know. Unless someone out there knows, chime in. That's it for this video. I don't want to make this too long. I'm already making it too long. Just wanted to show how well this is going to clean up. Thanks for watching. This is Tom, 73.